Welcome everyone to week number six in Science 200. This week is all about the ecological damage that was done by the Deepwater Horizon oil spill and you will learn about that, especially the tiniest little creatures, uh, one of the groups that was studied. Um, so you'll learn about that and you're putting together the final touches on your paper on your topic. So let's see what we've got going on. So last week you learned about biases in scientific research and how we try our very best to remove any type of bias. Bias produced in and by the researcher, uh, bias produced by the funding of this research, bias produced by the subjects, patients, Richard, quit. That's my cat. So anyway, um, so we try to remove all the biases that we possibly can from scientific research in order to give it validity. And you learned more about the Deepwater Horizon oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. This week, you're gonna learn some more. You're gonna learn about the ecological travesty that happened when all of his oil was dumped into the Gulf of Mexico. And you start out by learning about the forums. Forums are tiny little microscopic critters. Um, and they're part of plankton, but they are tremendously important for the whole food web of the ecosystem of the ocean. And they were destroyed by this oil spill. And if you think about it, they didn't mention, but if you look at it even on a bacterial level, so the bacteria would be the, the lowest level of organisms in the ocean, but they were destroyed as well. And so if you take out the base of a food web, you are going to destroy the food web, and that is what happened. So besides the forums that nobody cared about or um, was concerned about with this oil spill, you had death of so many fish, so many seabirds, so many sea mammals, um, sharks, etc. There was just so much ecological damage because of this. Um, so you will learn about more uh, of the ecological damage this week with your readings. Okay, and then you have your planning document. So this is the last week that you work on your paper. This is the last week that you work on your research and putting together all your information. Okay, now if you will notice something, assignment 5-4 four, and 6-4 are exactly the same assignment. So I'll be grading that assignment for week five this week as soon as I can and if you make 50 out of 50 points then you basically just turned that in for the week six assignment. What I want you to notice is that there's a huge difference in the point value. So the point value for the 5-4 assignments 50 points and the point value for the six dash four assignment is 168 points. This is your final paper that you're turning in for your research that you did. Okay, if you have not earned all of your points for that assignment 5-4, please make the changes that I suggest in my feedback, improve it, and then turn in a perfect paper for your 6-4 assignment. At your planning document this week. In the next two weeks, so we've got two more weeks left of the term, so if you, you're turning in your final paper, what the heck are you doing for the next two weeks? Well, you're making a presentation from all of the information that you have gathered, and you have written up all that information in your paper, right? So you're going to put together a presentation about your topic. Next week, you will be putting together your speaker's notes. So that would be exactly what you would say as you're showing your presentation to your particular audience, which you've already chosen. So you're showing slides to this audience and you're talking about the slides. Your speaker's notes are what you would be saying to your audience. The final week, you'll be working on those slides and putting together your whole presentation including the inclusion of those speaker's notes. And I will talk about that next week, so don't worry about it, but just so you know what's coming up in the next two weeks. 
All right, then also in week six and in week eight, you will have discussion board postings. You haven't had these every week, but you have them this week. In your initial post, you need to answer the question, what is the most interesting thing that you discovered when you did your research on your topic? What was the most interesting thing? And why was this interesting? Hmm. So if you were studying electric vehicles, did you learn that they were perfectly carbon free in every aspect from production of batteries to running them to powering them to disposing of them? Uh, hmm. I doubt it. Uh, what about GMOs? Did you find out that they cause cancer, that they cause diabetes, that they cause heart disease? It, no, you didn't because there's not a single study that indicates that. Um, so that's probably something surprising if you study GMOs. Um, if you study genetic engineering, did you figure out that it's not being done in humans yet? Yeah, it's not because of all the ethical issues. So what was the most surprising thing that you discovered through your research about your topic? Why was it interesting and why is this topic relevant to you? Why do you even care about it? This is going to be important. Uh, I think I mentioned before, if you don't show that you care about this topic, why should your audience, if you don't show your audience why they should care about a topic, why should they care? Okay, this must be at least a paragraph. It's going to take you at least one sentence to answer each of these questions. So this is not a one sentence daily for your initial post in the discussion board. And then in your response post, what interests you about that person's topic? Was that thing that they discovered interesting to you? And what further questions do you have about their topic? Maybe these are things that they hadn't even thought of, that they hadn't considered. So that's kind of cool. Um, so make sure you turn in that initial post by Thursday before midnight and the two response posts before Sunday at midnight. And then my tip of the week is to proofread your work. Especially for a big important paper like this 6-4 assignment. Okay, It's important to proofread your work. Some people have a great skill for proofreading. It's always hard to proofread your own work. I'll guarantee you that. So here is something that you can do. And it sounds silly, but it works. Read your work out loud to yourself. So take that paper before you submit it uh, for this week six, hey Richard, for this week six assignment and read it out loud to yourself. You will find mistakes as you read it. Read it slowly and carefully out loud to yourself. You will find the mistakes. And all of us are typing these documents in Word or something like that. Richard, my cat is being bossy tonight. Um, Pay attention to the spelling and grammar errors because we all use software that points it out to us. So be aware of those, fix those as you run across them. And you'll also find some when you proofread by reading aloud. You will find some that maybe Word doesn't catch because it doesn't recognize those. Um, so that being said, I hope that you have a wonderful week six, that you're recuperating from the hurricane. If you were impacted by it, I certainly was. My power was out for nine hours one day, but uh, I had a lot less effect on me and my household than most of South Carolina and North Carolina did, and Georgia and Tennessee. Um, so I hope you're recuperating from that. Let's watch out for the next couple of hurricanes that are headed this way. Um, with that being said, I hope that you have a wonderful week six this week. And please let me know if you need anything. m.sigmund at snhu.edu.